Today I'm finally going to show you the more than 20 games that I brought home from Essence Spiel this year. Now there are more than 20, so this is gonna have to be a long video, but I've gone ahead and I've made an index, a table of contents in the description below, and you can also click through using nav navigation at the bottom of the video there. The games are in no particular order, but I did group them by um, the producers. So to start, uh, I've been very excited about this game, Ensemble. I actually featured this game in one of my videos of games to buy and games to avoid, but this is a really good party game, group game, family game that's based entirely on pictures. So if you've ever played The Mind, and you know that The Mind is a cooperative game where players are trying to think alike in order to play a sequence of numbers. It's like that, very much like that, but in this game, players are trying to think alike in order to identify pictures. So uh, this is a totally language independent game, which I think makes it really attractive. And it's, it's very, very uh, accessible, very easy to teach. So, oh, and by the way, uh, I bought, th this is the only game that I bought in German. They did not have an English edition of this, at least that I could find. So I decided to buy a German edition since it is language independent. Uh, although I do believe an a English version is supposed to be released this winter. Ensemble. So the next game is from an Italian company called uh, Gate on Games. And I got to talk to the designer of this of, of uh, well, one of these games. Uh, the first one is called Gorio, and Gorio. Well, first I want to tell you a little bit about the production company. See, you know that I like to focus on family board games. Uh, for family board games, Ensemble is a family board game, and this really hits the spot because for me, a family board game shouldn't be designed to be a family board game because the ones that usually get that designation of family board game are more like kid games and that's not what I'm into. What I want is a game that's one step above where my kids are. Something that's going to push them to the next level. So I'm never finding games that are right where they're at but I really like it when they're just a little bit more complicated and that's what Gate on Games does so well. Both of the games that I've got here are games that are accessible to my kids. They understand them and they can play them, but they're going to be a little bit harder. And they don't even look like, uh, you know, kid games. They, 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 these are games that anybody can enjoy. So Gorio is a hidden movement game. It's really designed for two players. Uh, I feel like you could easily just make it where people are on the same team and they're talking together, but it's a two-player game. A, the spirit of a princess is embodied in this cat. She's going through the castle and she's wrecking uh, the treasures. And then the guards are trying to find her and reveal her movement. So that's going to go over well with KK, my youngest. And then this one, it's a bomb. This is the designer that I spoke with, Christian Giove. And in It's a Bomb, this is a cooperative deduction game where there is a clue giver who is also trying to use his unique, his or her unique powers to help the rest of the team determine where a bomb is and how to disarm it. So you're, you're getting hints in order to figure out where the red wire or the blue wire or the black wire is so you can cut the wires. And there's, a, there's actually timer cards in this game. So... If you, if you cut a wire that you're supposed to cut, everything is good. But if you ask a question for a hint, the time drops down. If you cut a wire that you're not supposed to cut, the time drops down. If you, you know, do any number of mistakes, the time is, is ticking down. So you only have a certain number of moves for each scenario. And there's a lot of expansions for this. So I am very excited to play this with both of my kids. It's a bomb. Those are both from Gate on Games. Uh, the next one, from Second Gate Games, this was a big table. They, they attracted a lot of attention. Big Kickstarter here. It's called Cactus Town. 
and this is a this is a this is quite a box. Um, it is an asymmetrical action programming game. So what that means is each player it's asymmetrical, meaning each player has a different character with different objectives and different actions they can perform. And it's action planning, meaning that each person, each player, has a set of cards and they have to select all of their actions and play them before anything is done. And that creates a deck. So you get three cards from each player, so there could be up to 12 cards in the deck. And then the cards are revealed one by one. And you have to react to your card as it comes out. Sometimes you can anticipate what other players are doing and other times you get you're not able to anticipate and you end up having a pointless move but um, it's very similar to the train game action planning train game that I can't think of the name of right now hmm but I'll be able to put a note when I edit this later cactus town neat little game haven't tried it yet this is a very very robust game with lots of expansions built in and there's miniatures and a bunch of extra stuff that came with it. I bought King Domino mats, by the way. Um, King Domino mats are an excellent aid or, or really a mat for any game where you're placing tiles can really help with younger children who have trouble visualizing like, for example, in King Domino you're supposed to play in a 5x5 five five grid and you're just supposed to envision it. But having that mat, that, that tactile object to help keep track of the spacing is really good for younger kids. Uh, the next game was generated a lot of excitement, it seemed. They had a lot of tables set up for this at Essen Spiel. And it's called Flamecraft. Now, Flamecraft is a... It looks like it's designed to be a beautiful game. This is the kind of game that came with expansions where you could have miniatures and metal coins and wooden tokens and all of this so that you could just make it more attractive. Uh, although I really bought this because I knew it would be an enchanting game for my family. I knew that my kids and my wife would be drawn into it. Reading the rules, i got to say there's not a lot to like blow my mind here. This seems pretty... Um, ordinary like kind of worker placement game basically you're moving your dragons through a town to perform actions on buildings and then you can augment the buildings and make them stronger so I think the interesting aspect is that the buildings are available to all players and everybody is making all of the moves on the all of the actions on the board more valuable spaces that's kind of interesting but mostly my wife really loves dragons and I knew this was going to be a hit it, it does have a nice table presence, though. Flamecraft does. Okay. The next game, GDM Games, or Mont Tabor Games. This is called Insecta, Ladies of Entomology. Now, quite honestly, I got this game because of its theme. This is about female scientists who made advances in entomology evidently from reading the rule book uh, there was a point in history where the study of insects was not as you know kind of looked down upon by all the male dominated scientists and so women went into that field and did a lot of the study and it ended up being very important and they made a lot of progress uh, on their own all, you know women did so in this game all of the characters are women. It's not like the normal gender breakdown. I mean, you look at Cactus Town and it's like every character is a boy except for one. This game, they're all women. I have two daughters. They're women scientists. There's like some history in there. I absolutely got this game for its theme. Reading the rule book, it's basically a set collection game. So you're moving around a map and you're collecting these insect tiles in order to fulfill uh, orders for the various academies that are studying entomology. So it's, it's just a set collection game. There's a little bit of element of luck as you, um, you know, you're, you're pulling off car, uh, tiles off of a, a deck. But I'm okay with that. It, you know, not every game I have to get has to be like perfect genius gameplay. 
Uh, sometimes they just have an enlightening lesson to them. Now, I showed you that one because this one was included for like another extra five euro festival. And this is a, it's a tile placing game, but unlike most tile placing games where you place a tile and it stays in its position, in this game you can move tiles around and what you're trying to do is satisfy different objectives. Uh, basically, in the game you've got, you've got the fairgrounds or where the festival is being held and there's different stages and so you're getting points if your tiles can cover different areas based on the objectives that come up. Um, I didn't go to, you know, I didn't try to hunt this game down, but when I bought Insecta, they said, hey, you know, they would include this for five euro. So, why not? And I do like it. I mean, it's, it's pretty, a unique theme, which I enjoy. So that'll be fun to try out. Uh, I think we're going to jump to some games by some Asian designers. So if you watched my highlights of Essen video, I talked a lot about people that I met uh, from Taiwan and Thailand and Singapore and a lot of different countries uh, through some YouTubers that I met when playing a game. Hey, you know what? Let me share this. I didn't actually bring this back from Essen, but this is the game that helped me make a lot of friends. This was sent to me by the game's designer, Twin Palms, and it's one of the first games that I played with other people at Essen and I, you know, really connected from there. So, it was my icebreaker game. But the nice thing about Twin Palms, it's a trick-taking game. You probably know a few trick-taking games. This is the only trick-taking game I've ever played where when you play on your turn, instead of playing one card, you can play two cards. And so there's some really interesting hand management that goes into this game as you try to construct a good pair. It gives you a lot more control of what you wanted to do, and it was a lot of fun. Twin Palms. Anyway, I used that game, and that was how I connected with some people, and they introduced me to some more designers. So let's do the ones from Thailand first. Uh, Kong Kang. So this is a card passing game. Cute little theme where you're gorillas that are trying to throw a party and you're trying to get the most bananas. Um, and then you've got the other jungle animals that are trying to join the game or trying to join the party. Um, you know, this was a, this was, it's a, it's mostly a card game. It's got some, a neat little like passing mechanic to it. Um, yeah, I mean this I'm, I'll give it a try. I, I was given that game, actually. Uh, and then the next one, I was given a couple of these. I bought one, but then he gave me some more. So this is called Political Mess. Ooh, look at that. I have to bring it close because it's so small. It's a little card game. This is just, um, you're overlapping the cards and playing them on top of each other. It's much like a tile placing game. And I was given a few copies so I could share it. Now, stack me. Stack Me, also a small game. Looks like a little baby game, right? Looks like it's about little baby bunny and kitten and stuff. Uh, this has ABCs on the letters. It looks very childish. It's actually, here, let me show you a single card. So this says G-H-I, and what's on there? Giraffe, a hen, and insect. So it looks like a little baby game, but it's actually really fun. I would, I would play this with grown-ups. Uh, you're just trying to drop cards on top of each other in alphabetical order. So you're going through your deck as fast as you can to drop as many cards as you can. The game ends once you get to the last letter of the alphabet, and then the person who played the most cards wins. It's super simple and really easy to introduce when you're playing with your kids. So those are all from one company, and the company was called... Uh, I forgot... Oh, come on. We play. Well, Wise Box. Wise Box. And then I went over to the Singapore game production company, or Game, and I played this game Rainforest City. Rainforest City is an environmental conservation themed game that is. So, so clever. This was a huge surprise for me. I, I did not think that this family game would be so innovative and well done. 
uh, basically what's happening is you got an act. Um, it's it's yeah, I want to say tile selection, but you've got some overlapping stuff or sorry tile placing game. Um, but what's happening is there are pairs of tiles that are put out, and you've got sort of a dial, and so you pick which pair of tiles you want, and you turn the dial to point to that pair, and when you do that, the other arrows, the other parts of the dial, are pointing to the other sets, and those pointers are telling you who picks up which other uh, set of tiles. So your selection determines what everybody else gets. I like that. So every you know everybody's taking tiles at the same time. Everybody's placing their tiles at the same time. You can either expand your rainforest or place animals. So there's a, there's multiple choices that you have to make there, and uh, you're trying to build a complete ecosystem, which requires a full food chain. So you've you know you've got to have plants, and then you've got to have the small food chain like the fish, and then you've got to have the higher food chain, the otters or something. I I really like how those scoring themes lend themselves to, to like what it's trying to teach the kids. And then you've got a whole other aspect of pollution. It's a consequence of houses being put near your rainforest. There's just so much going on. There's so much game packed into a simple rule set. That's really what it is. It's that the game is so elegant and the mechanics are so smart and yet the game isn't it's not complicated. It's, it's still very easy to learn. I can play it with my kids. So, same designer made Mooncake Masters. Mooncake Masters is... Oh boy, how do I describe this one? You're trying to satisfy objectives with mooncakes. So you've got these tiles. You're building multiple mooncakes. Let me show you a single tile. Each tile has like a quarter of a cake on it. And so you get points for like the seeds and the, and the little candies and things on the cake. And you also have different colors. So you're trying to match them in such a way that the colors match up. It's basically a set collection. And I thought it would be fun for us to play as a family. It comes in a nice box, but it's hard to put back together. I'm just going to set it down. All right. And same designer reef rescue very small game this is like a memory game so and i really liked it i think it's really nice you know how normally in memory you have a turn to flip over a pair of tiles and if you get a match you get to keep it or you get to go again so the same idea you're trying to basically i'll say pairs of tiles um but the difference is in this game you can uh use an action to reveal a different number of tiles so you can reveal five tiles or three tiles you can do them in a row there's different ways you can use the actions and it, it really makes it more challenging for the memory element okay and so now we'll go to taiwan taiwan vita morse this is a social deduction game so it's for large groups but what I really like about this one is it's an asymmetrical social deduction game. And instead of two competing parties, there's three. And it plays with three players. I've never seen a social deduction game which plays with as few as three players. Uh, and it's a very, very high quality production for a card game, although it was very, very expensive too. It has all of these metal pieces and just excellent artwork. Um, it, it's gorgeous. So I really like this. I got to meet the designer and the artist. And then uh, they also, same company, uh, makes... Is it called Zoll's Wonderland? Okay, the, the same company makes this game. Uh, Wonderland Chapter 13. So this is a card game. A little bit of a press your luck element. You're using keys to unlock doors, which are these dreams of Alice in Wonderland, and you're trying to collect different sets of cards, and uh, you don't want to collect too many cards of a certain type, or your turn is over, so there's a press your luck element. Also, very, very high quality production, and I showed this in my other video, but I'll show it again, because it's so special. In the Vita Moors, the artist, 
actually inscribed to me. She drew me a picture. All right, moving on. Blue, you know what? Blue Orange Games is one of my favorite production companies. They did have Next Station London, which is a writing game where you're you're making paths. I didn't buy it because I think that those are kind of a dime a dozen, these roll and write type games. Uh, I did buy Wonder Woods, which is a mushroom collection game. And I thought it would be really cool, but... It's supposed to have some bluffing in it. I played it with my brother already, and it just, it, it, I feel like it failed to deliver. And the reason why is because in a bluffing game, the length of the game needs to be long enough that you can recover from your bluff. Like, this game is so short, you really just have to play as, as efficiently as possible. There's not enough time to mess around trying to bluff and fool with people in order to trick them. So I feel like it, it fell flat to me, but maybe I just played with the wrong player count. I don't know. Really well done design, though. You know, beautiful mushrooms and these wooden pieces and your baskets in the woods. And that's the only game that I got from Blue Orange Games, even though I did think the London was pretty good. Now... The next game is a game that has been recommended to me on multiple occasions by the same guy in the comments there, Mr. Flipside666, and it's called The Wandering Towers. I don't even want to try to say the, the name in German, but that's, that's the name in German. In English, The Wandering Towers. This is the English edition. The, the name is just a German name for an English game. Oh, wow. No. The box is... Okay. Never mind. The box is actually in German, but the instructions are in English. And uh, this is an excellent family game. Excellent family game. You're trying to move these wizards around a track. They're wizards, right? Where's the magic? The magic is the towers on the track can also move. So the track is ever-changing, and the towers can even land on top of the wizard and, will, and trap uh, him or her. So I love this. This was, you know, a card play driven game uh, but a, a very very fun one definitely something that children are going to enjoy but anybody would enjoy this is a good game for adults i, I say like children because i'm i'm buying family games but i love it when a game doesn't have to be played with kids to be fun you can play this with grown-ups and it's cool all right now i went to alley cat games let me make sure i got both of those yeah i got two games from alley cat games the first one, to be completely honest, I don't even know why I got it. I guess I got it because I like Japan, but it's called Eternal Palace. It is, I know why I got it. It's a die uh, worker placement game. It's a dice management game. And I really like die worker placements. The game looks great. It has this whole art theme going on where you're building a canvas. I think that's super cool too. Um, I even think the, the mechanic, the way you're using dice to perform your actions is cool. Can you tell where I'm going with this? There's a huge butt coming. But the game d fails to deliver on theme. There, there is very little to understand about what the heck it is you're doing. Like I, I said it's die worker placement. It doesn't even say in the rules what the die signify if they're, you know, are, are they workers? Are they people that you know, employees or so. I don't, I don't know. There's, there's a lot lacking in this rule book and I was disappointed about that, but you know, it's, it is, it's, it's very attractive. Okay. But also from Alley Cat Games is a game that I knew I wanted, a game I'm very excited about. And I'm telling you of all of the games on the, in this set, the one I'm going to talk about next is probably going to be my top favorite because the rule book for this was sick. My mind was exploding when I read the rules. I was like, wow, there's so many cool things to think about when you play this game. That's what I was thinking about as I read the rules. I read them on an airplane. Autobahn. Autobahn, you are the engineers building the, the um, freeways in Germany, and you're getting, uh, you're trying to get promoted in the company. That's really what you're trying to do. And there is an amazing card mechanic that is, I'm going to try to summarize, but it's kind of complex. 
Um, every card that you play is of a certain color, and the color determines what the effects are that you can do. So if you want to move on a road, you can only move on a road that matches the color of the card that you play, and you play that card into an action space. So you have to play a card to do perform the action, and what you've got to ask yourself is, do I want to use this uh, orange card now, or do I want to save it for when I might want to use the orange actions later? You're, you're basically planning two things at the same time. The action you want to do and the, the hand of colors that you want to keep or use for the right time. So I was really attracted to how much is going on there, but this is a complex game and I would have a difficult time saying much more about it than that. Really well done and also like absolutely no element of luck. And you know how I am with games that have a lot of luck. I typically don't like them if, it, if they're going to involve a lot of brain power to play. So those were the games from Alley Cat Games. The next one is from a company huh, called Blam. I never heard of this company, Blam. I know this is on Board Game Arena now, but it's called Farm Club, and it's a small game. This is a, this looks like a light game. It's a small box game, but there's a lot to think about. It plays in nine rounds, and what you're doing is you're filling a three by three grid with farm animals. And you know, on your turn, you pick up a farm animal and you put it in your farm. Sounds simple enough. Here's what makes it so thoughtful. Every farm animal you pick up also comes with an objective. So maybe the objective is have more goats than chickens. Or maybe the objective is have more horses than the person on your right. Or maybe the objective is has, have a duck, right? Regardless of what it is, you take the animal and the objective at the same time. So, you know, you might want a duck, but then you're thinking, oh, I want that duck, but then do I really want that objective? Maybe I should just take the horse. And of course, you're competing with other people, so there's this drafting thing. There's like so much going on. And the whole rule set is like, on your turn, pick up an animal and put it in your farm and keep the objective. Like that's basically, it. there's something about leaders in there too, which I'm not gonna describe in this short video. But once again, whole lot of game in a very small box. I'm really excited about it, Farm Club. Now, if there's any game that I'm more excited about than Autobahn, it might be Stratera. Because Stratera is actually a prototype. There were only nine of these made so far. There's going to be a game found campaign next January or February, and the developers of this game gave it to me so that I could review it myself, which I was very, honored to be able to do because guess what not only is it cool to have a prototype but the game is actually cool there's some real potential here this is a double asymmetric uh, game that you know it is very similar to root you've got gods and you've got the straterans and then they are different and they're different they're all trying to achieve different objectives and it's very story driven too so there's different scenarios i've played two scenarios so far and uh it, it was very cool, like it really changed the gameplay and it made me want to play again too because I, I kind of did a terrible job both times. But I think this is going to be really cool. So, uh, you know, this is not a game that's going to be available for a while, but you can sign up for notifications on the Game Found page and I'll leave a link in the description. That's for Stratera. Uh, then, I've actually got two more small games here, I almost didn't notice them. So, Escapes, this was actually by Gate on Games. It was the third game I bought. I talked about them. This was the Gorio and the It's a Bomb uh, producer. But these are mini escape rooms that are stories told through folded pieces of paper, and you play them with your phone. You play them with a mobile device, and an app. So I've never done anything like that before. I just, you know, kind of added it to my purchase. Um, we'll see how that goes. Mini escapes. I do like escape rooms. Now, this is a game I've never talked about on this channel before because I don't like this game. But I still brought it home because it came for free with another thing that I purchased. I don't even remember what it was. But it's called Similo. Uh, maybe you've heard of Similo before. I feel like this is a game that's you know gaining popularity. This is a cooperative game where what you're trying to do is help the people on your team guess a picture that is available on the board and every time 
uh, it's your turn, you're going to play a card and you're going to indicate whether the card that you're trying to guess, your target card, is either like the card you're playing or not like the card you're playing. And after receiving five hints like this, it's like this, it's not like that. It's not like that, it is like this. Right? Uh, the players can try to guess the target card. So, uh, I, I, you know, I don't f think too highly of the game, but you know what I think is really cool? If I can get this thing open. Got it. Every card in this game is one of the board games that was available at Essen. I don't, I don't even, I didn't even see this one. Voodoo, I didn't even see that one. What game is this? Mists over Carcassonne. I did see that one. I think that's cool. I think it's really cool that they made a deck of cards, which is all games from the event. And it even says inside that this was brought to you by all the producers. They all, they all work together to, to make, to construct, there it is. They all work together to make this game. So, very neat. All right, two more really cool games. Um, you know what? I think this is the best, so I'm going to do this one last. The next one I'm going to do is Revive. So this was, oh man, this was a very popular game at Essen. I saw so many people who put this in their bags. This is a post-apocalyptic world, and you know, thousands of years in the future, these like strangely evolved humanoid things come out from under the ground and they try to revive the planet. This is really a card-driven uh, engine builder game with some area movement on the board and um, kind of a, a you know a kind of a interesting tech board that's all twisted up. Um, was really excited about the theme. Did get a chance to play this one and talk to other people who played it as well. It, the theme falls a little bit flat. There's not a lot of story in this game, even though there's an attempt to put story in it. There's not a lot of significance that really comes through, unfortunately. But I think the gameplay is really fun, and I do want to play again. I, but I was just expecting a little bit more, given how popular it was at Essen and how many people were after it. And there's this last game. You know, I almost didn't buy this because I didn't think the artwork was that great. But it's called Woodcraft. And the reason I bought it was because in the end I realized that the designer is the person who did Praga Caputereni. And Woodcraft is really cool. This is a dice... Yeah, dice game doesn't do the right... It's not the right word. It's a dice manipulation game. In the game, the dice are your wood. You're crafting things with dice. So, for example, if you have a piece of wood, you can cut that wood into pieces and you can make two pieces of wood. Well, in Woodcraft, you can have one die, let's say it's a five, and you can cut that die in half or, you know, however you want. You can make it into two die. And maybe the result has to, or the result has to add up to the total. So, if you cut a five die in half, you can cut it into three and a two, or you can cut it into four and a one. Um, you can cut a six, you know, or you can splice, you can glue dice together. So you can take a two and a three and you can glue them together and make a five. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to do these different wood projects and uh, fulfill orders for different wood craft. And there's a really, really good uh, action board where there's a saw and actions that don't get taken become more valuable as the saw rotates. That's the point. It's... It's very, very cool and clever and intuitive and well-designed, but very difficult to describe in this short video. I can't wait to try it. Woodcraft. Those are my games. That, that's, it's a lot. It's a lot of games. Here, let me show you. Bum, bum, bum. All of that. I have to play all these things. All of that. So, yeah, and you're like, what's, what else is there? This is all I do to set up. See, look at me. I've got my lights, got my computer. It's all it's all set up. This is my um, couch, but it, my mother-in-law was sleeping on there, so that's why we've got the blankets. Anyway, bum bum. That's what's going on over here. I'll be playing games for 
weeks to come, making more reviews for you. Thanks for watching. Look forward to hearing from you when you tell me which game would you like me to play and review next. This is what we have to choose from. Let me know. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Bye-bye.